Isaiah chapter 41. 41st book of the Bible is the Gospel of Mark. Keep silent. Oh, okay. There's going to be silence in heaven one day. I think for an hour. Keep silent before me, God speaks. Oh, islands. I don't know who those islands are. Some say Gentiles. Let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let us come near to judgment. And Isaiah chapter 1, 18 says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. Who raised up the righteous man from the east? Called him to his foot. Gave the nations before him. Now, we talked about the nations in chapter 40. They're a drop in a bucket. And made him ruler over the kings. He gave them as the dust of his sword. And driven trouble in his bomb. Who makes the rulers? Who makes the king? God and the devil. Not voting. He pursues them and passes safely. Even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Now some say this is Cyrus. <clears throat> Who has wrought and done it? Calling from generations from the beginning. Now make your way back up to verse 2 and say, Who has made rule over kings? Back down to verse 5. I, the Lord. I mean, there are some Christians that think, I voted and I put a man into office. I voted and the vote was stolen and I didn't get my man in office. You see what kind of age of Christianity we're in today? And then they'll get up and say, well, you're not supposed to gripe and complain like the children of Israel did. Well, I didn't get my president. That's hypocrisy. Who put? Who set up the king? God. Now I'm going to show you something here. I, the Lord, the first and with the last. I am he. So the rebuke to Jehovah Witnesses, as we countlessly have. Let's run over to Genesis, or excuse me, Revelation 22. Revelation 22, the end of the Bible. The last book, last chapter. Revelation 22. And let's check something out here. Revelation 22, I'll get there. Oop, now I'm in the index. Revelation 20. My page in my Bible sticks, so I apologize. Revelation 22 and verse 13. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Got that? That's Jesus. Run back to Isaiah. I am the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the first. And with the last, I am he. What are you going to do with the Jehovah Witnesses? Just throw them in the garbage can. Don't need to go look at the New World Translation. The King James. I mean, the New World Translation, they may change it just so they can be right. But what are you going to do? There it is. They're wrong. The Isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near, and came. And here we go. They helped everyone his neighbor. Everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he smoothed with the hammer him that smote the anvil, saying, it is ready for soldering and fastening it with nails, that it should not be moved. Jeremiah 10.4 Look at chapter 40, verse 19. The goldsmith melted the grain with image. Now, we're over here, and you can see what I'm looking up now. Let's do C A R P E N T E. Now, we have a rule. And many preachers, pastors, and teachers will say the rule, the first to be 
that shows up in the Bible. So let's look up the word carpenter and see where it shows up. Oh, look at that. It shows up four times in the Bible. Isaiah 41, verse 7. Talk about an idol. Isaiah 44, 13. Carpenter stretch out his rule. He makes it with a line. He fasts it with planes. He makes it out to be a compass. He makes it after a figure of a man, according to the beauty of man, that he may remain in his house. That's an image, an idol. We got two more. Matthew 13, 55. Is not this a carpenter's son? Is this not mother called Mary? His brother, James, Joseph, Simon, Judah. Mark 6, 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, brother James? Well, Jesus was a carpenter. How can you say I'm about my father's business sitting at the temple? In the first place carpenter shows up is in reference two places is in reference to an image and idolatry. Two places. Is that the carpenter? Now I'll give you the benefit of doubt. We'll do C A R P E N T E and we'll do the asterisk. Okay. Now we're looking at the temple. We're looking at the temple. Temple, 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 temple. That's carpenters. So I'm gonna let you draw your own conclusion. But four times the word carpenter shows up in the Bible, and this is the first place it shows up. And the next place also has to do with idolatry. And two, the other two places, is he the carpenter's son? So, we'll move on. Is it ready for solder and fasten it with nails? It should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant. So Israel is God's servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, no Ishmael. Hey, Jacob is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. And I like this because now you can see what I see. There's no bait. And called from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, Israel. I have chosen thee, Israel, and not cast thee away. Well, we saw in chapter 40, the nations are dropping a bucket, but there's one nation above all nations. That whom I've taken from the ends of the earth and called from the chief thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee, not cast thee away. Some religions will say that God's cast away Israel. He hasn't. Fear thou not, for I am, that's God, Jehovah, with thee. Moses said, what's your name? I can tell the children of Israel. I am that I am. When Jesus said that he, what he, I am, man, they were going to stone him. They knew what Jesus said, even though the Jehovah Witnesses don't. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, Israel. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Because who's seated at the right hand of the Father? Jesus. The right hand of my righteousness. What's the righteousness of, Je of God? Jesus Christ. Behold, all they were incest against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Death. So these are the nations against Israel. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, Israel, fighting with Israel, problems with Israel. They that war against thee, Israel, shall be nothing. And as a thing of naught, you know, curse them that curse thee. People are going to say, okay, where's the Nazi party? Gone. Where's Babylon? Gone. Where will be the Edomites? Gone. Where's the, where's the Assyrians? Gone. Will be to England because England told 
Israel, yeah, you can have the land, but then we got to have, you know, give a little bit to the Jordans. Belfour decoration and all that. America a couple times have, have stood against Israel. For I, the Lord, will, ho will hold thy right hand. Now, that's Israel's right hand. That's not God's right hand. Saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. So the picture is God holding hands with Israel. Let's go. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, ye men of Israel. I will help thee. Magic God, you're my people. You're my, we're going to hold hands. You're a worm. What would Jesus say? Hypocrites. Vipers. <laughs> What would Jesus do? He walk in your church and kick all the tables over. What would Jesus do? Walk out of your church, close the door. You want to come out of there? I don't know what. Uh, what would Jesus do? WWJD. I, I mean, if, if Jesus, it would it be WWID. What would I do? <laughs> Foolish. Thy Redeemer, that's God, the Holy One of Israel. And he redeemed the Mount of Egypt. He'll redeem him out of the tribulation. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. This is uh, Isaiah 28, 21 to 29, Daniel 2, 34, Ezekiel 1, 4, and 26. Thou shalt thresh the mountain, and this is the enemies of Israel. And beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff, waste. No good, no value. Thou shalt fan them, the, the, the enemies of Israel. The wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. Thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory the Holy One of Israel. Victory of Israel over the enemies of Israel by God the Father. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, the tongue fails for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will, will not forsake them. You better have the God of Israel. You better not have the God of Islam. You better not have the God of Italy. You better not have the God of America. You better have the God of Israel. I will open rivers on high, in high places. That's where they were worshiping gods. And fountains in the midst of the valleys. This is the old millennium. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. Where the desert will have water. I will plant in the wilderness. Well, you don't plant nothing in the wilderness. You realize in the wilderness journey of the 40 years that God had to supply miraculously for the nation of Israel because there was nothing there. I will plant in the wilderness a shittim tree. You say, what's that? A shittim tree. The myrtle. The oil tree. You say, what's an oil tree? An oil tree. Probably olive. Ooh. Did you check the Hebrew? No, I read everywhere in the Bible, oil is olive. <laughs> to English. I will set in the desert the fir tree. Uh, fir tree. <laughs> Got it. No Hebrew. And the pine tree. I wonder what the pine tree is. And the box. Oh, what's the box tree? It's a tree they make boxes out of. <laughs> Together. Because people have problems with verse 19. There's no problem with verse 19. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created. Now there's a problem because there is money and humans and people right now Building conduits and building pools and irrigation. That's the word I was looking for. 
over in Israel today. And when I grew up as a kid, I remember they were using, you know, you can give money to plant a tree, tree in Israel. That's fine and dandy, but God didn't do that. God says there's coming a time when you're going to say, I did it. And God's not going to do it with copper pipes and PCV pipes. He's going to do it naturally. Give God the credit. Produce. God, your fruits and vegetables. Produce. From the water. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King Jesus of Jacob. So that's God saying, Jesus saying, all right, come. Got your questions? You realize every question that the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees brought to Jesus, he answered some way, somehow. But there were times that Jesus asked them a question, like, I don't know. I think at the great white throne judgment, I think, I mean, it's going to be no time, so it's going to be plenty of, of eternity. I think people are going to be able to walk up to God and say, well, you know, question God. Depart from me, cursed into the light. Prepare for the devil's angels. Why? What, what makes you do that, God? I'm a good person. Okay. And God will answer. I think. There'll be a time when we all say at some point in, in maybe the millennium or in eternal. At this point, all right, we're going to gather around Jesus. And those who have read their Bible and unsure about passages in the Bible, which I got a few of them, I put question. Yes, Stiley, or a new name, I guess. Uh, Jesus says over here that they shall not see death, but do they see? You know, just before the transfiguration, that you said they will not see, and yet they all died. Okay, it could have been the transfer. Maybe it could have been John writing the book of Revelation, but a big question. And imagine, okay, let's open up our Bibles to the page, and let's find the question that Stalin had. And then, oh, I got another question from Stalin. I got to say this. I really got Lord Jesus, yeah. Why did they use the Hebrew and the Greek? Because they're puffed up with knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. All right, move on. <laughs> then I'll call it Webster. Hey, Webster, how you doing? Great dictionary. Oh, style you guys did doing that. I'm having fun. I forgot where I went. Oh, right, King of Jacob. Verse 22. Verse 22. I think all the Hebrew and Greek people, I think they're going to be put to shame. And let them bring them forth. What? The questions. And show us what shall happen. Uh-oh. Let them show the former things. What they be. We may consider them and know the latter end them and declare us the things for to come. Okay, here's your question. You want to question God? Tell us prophecy. Come on, give us prophecy. That's all the account of God. What is the faith of God? Prophecy. Everything 100% all the time. No general, pop, you know, you know, this year a famous leader is going to get married. Someone important is going to die. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you're somebody... Godly, you're somebody, prophecy. There's no prophets in the church age. Yes, there is. Because I go out in the streets, I tell them, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. That's prophecy. Now, I can't prophesy when you're going to die. I can't prophesy you're going to get married. I can't prophesy you're going to have uh, 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 you know, money. I can't prophesy like a fortune cookie or anything like that. But I can tell you where you're going to go in eternity. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to heaven. If you don't and reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. There is coming a period of time, the rapture, where God is going to rapture all the church up to Jesus Christ. It's coming a time of Jacob's trouble, seven years. The last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. The Antichrist is going to reign. It's going to be a thousand years year reign of Jesus Christ where Satan will be bound for a thousand. Is that not prophecy? 
Now, how do you tell me there's no prophets in the church age? But you can tell me the Hebrew and the Greek. I can do verse 23 through the scriptures. Now, God has not given me no special revelation. God's never going to give me the date of the rapture. But I have the Bible to tell me. Behold, ye are nothing. <laughs> That's God speaking about his creation. You're nothing. And your work of naught. It's your, whatever you do is nothing. You come to God with your questions. All right. Now God puts the questions to you. Like he did with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. All right. Now I got a question for you. Well, I don't know. What? Nicodemus came to the, the G. You must be born again. Uh huh. What? What's going on? He goes, Aren't you a doctor of these things? You don't know what I'm talking about? Took Nicodemus and he just put him down in the dirt. You're a doctor and you're a master of Israel and you. I believe that's what God's going to do. These, these Hebrew Greek professors and, you know, I'm just so smart and all that. He's going to put them down in the ground. They tried to tempt Jesus with his question, and he answered their questions and put them to shame, and then he questioned them. And then you get these Hebrew scholars today and, and Greek scholars today. Oh, oh, all right, pro, there's no prophets in the church. Then you don't witness to nobody. Because when you're witnessing somebody, you bring in the gospel, you're telling them there's a heaven and there's a hell. That's prophecy. You're telling them they're going to die. You just can't give a date. And then when you don't do it, he said, look, you're good for nothing. Show these things that are good to come hereafter. That we, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Look at that. We. That's God saying it. I gotta make that. No, I gotta mouth there. Tomorrow when I just do my buddy. Maybe later. Make him know. Hold on. I missed that. That's the Trinity. Show us the Trinity. There he is. That's God saying the Trinity. That's me. That's God. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit right there in the Trinity. Show that to you, Jehovah Witness. We made that thou art gods. Isn't that what the claim was, Satan to Eve? You shall be as gods and know good and evil. Yea, do good or do evil, that we, there's a trinity again, may be dismayed and behold it. You met, you met, there's a trinity of God, like, wow, check that out. I didn't know we could do that. Isn't that interesting? Of all the great things, realize God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, 100% God, 100% man, even God had to go poopy. What are you going to amaze God what you can do? The Hebrew and the Greek. God can quote every single language that was and was never to be in any new languages. God can say, hey, you know what? We're going to make man. But before we make man, you know what man? Man's going to want a glass of milk. All the angels have. Eh? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, we're going to make a thing that Adam's going to call a cow. And that cow is going to make little cows. And it's going to make glass of milk for mankind. And then later on, after Noah and all that, and it'll get to the point that cow will also become hamburger. Now, let's see how great you are that you take a four-legged animal that eats grass, 
gives us milk, gives us baby calves, gives us veal, and gives us hamburger. What are you going to do to please God? Waiting. And, and verse 23, is, is like, it's the Trinity saying, Ooh, oh, really? <laughs> and who made that brain that made you think of that? I'm telling you, they're going to be saved or lost. Behold, ye are nothing. <laughs> You met so you met, met, oh, I'm offended. Even the disciples went to Jesus after he, he spoke to them. You know, Jesus, you offended him? Yeah, so let's keep going. You know, with the street preaching ministry. Well, you, you, you offend us. Yeah, so what? Bible says I would. What do you want me to do? Stop? Yeah, no. Bible says keep doing it. You're nothing, and your work is not. Well, I got PhDs. I got, you know, I got d degrees and abbreviations, and I've got books and all that. Imagine God taking your books and say, "Well, you're wrong here. You're wrong there. You're wrong there. You're wrong there." Imagine God taking a modern Bible. Well, let me show you where you're wrong. You're wrong there. You're wrong there. Every place where they corrected the Bible. Imagine God correcting your correction of His work. An abomination. You know, we call, and it is, sodomy and, 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 and adultery and all that is an abomination of God. Well, so is thinking you're too smarter than God. Thinking you're important. Thinking you have the right to go up and question God. And people do it all the time. Well, don't, why does God allow it? You, oh, that's who we're talking to. Well, I don't think God would do it. There you go. That's the people we're talking to. We're not talking only to scholars. People go, well, judge not least to be judged. Well, you're questioning God. That's not what Jesus was. You're questioning God. It's not just the scholarly people. It's anybody who won't put their faith and trust in what God says in the dispensation that they're in. And Well, why? Your abomination is he that chooses you. I have raised up one from the north, Cyrus. He shall come from the rising of the sun. Shall he come upon my name? He shall come upon princes as upon uh, uh, princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treads clay. So Cyrus. It's prophesied in the Bible by name in other places. Can you do that? Can you tell us who the next president is going to be by name? Come on, let's see that prophecy. Of all the presidents in the United States, not one person is declared to name that president before he was inaugurated into office. And then about Jesus Christ, we are given the name, we are given the place, we are given the detail of a virgin birth, which is a miracle itself. We're given, not only that, we're given what nation he's born in, not only what nation, the tribe he's to be born of. We're told how he's going to die, when he's going to die. We're told about the disciples, the men that are going to live close to him. They you know, smite the shepherd and the, and the sheep shall flee. We're told that he's going to be betrayed by one of his, his friends and for 30 pieces of silver. Now that's prophecy. That's a lot better. Well, a royal somewhere... It's going to marry. That's garbage. Who has declared from the beginning, this is God, that we may know. 
And there's that Trinity again. Even I missed that. Make that known. That's the Trinity. God is saying to mankind, his creation. All right, come on. You're so good. Tell us what's going to happen. In detail. Correctly. Son, you ready for this? Holy Spirit, you're writing this down? That we may know. And before time, do it before it happens, that we may say, He is righteous. Even Satan himself can't give you prophecy. Yea, there is none that showeth. Yea, there is none that declare. No one has that prophecy of God. So get up to, oh, the Hebrew and the Greek, and I'm Dr. Such and Such, and I got a PhD. All right. See how many books you wrote? Tells exact details of New Jerusalem. Outside of what the Bible says. Prophesied to us. Why don't you tell us what the name of the Antichrist is going to be? We'll waiting for that one. That'd be a great DJ. Tell us the name of the Antichrist. We're waiting. I guess you're not God. I guess you're not important. Yea, there is none that shows. Yea, there is none that declares. Yea, there is none that heareth your words. <laughs> look, look, look what God said. There are people in your congregation. There are people in your classroom. There are your followers. You know what? They're not even listening to what you're saying. I mean, in your average church. Well, you know, the Greek. What do you think the congregation cares about the Greek? I mean, you think the congregation really, oh, you know, in the Greek it means, or, you know, the dictionary says, now that's going to, the ears. Because if you hand them a Greek New Testament, they wouldn't even know which way is up and which way is down. You hand them a, a, a Webster's English Diction. Oh, okay, this is... And right there, see right here, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The first shall say to Zion, Jerusalem, Behold, behold them. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. You know what that good tidings means, don't you? That's gospel. It's all about the gospel. Not your movies, not your church, not your programs, not your VBS. <coughs> Your VBA, your VBS is worthless if it does not contain the, the, the gospel of Jesus. Well, we learned about Billy's little bow. Did you tell them about the gospel of Jesus? No, Billy's little bow, and, and he had to buy it back in Emmy by Works. Billy brought his boat by his works. His own. That's not the gospel. Who died in Billy's boat? Who was buried in Billy's boat? Come on, I'm waiting. We have a movie night at church. Well, we do the Romans Road. Where is the death, burial, and resurrection on the Romans Road? Where is it? Romans Road is good when you got somebody who, who's, who's ready to surrender. Somebody's ready to, okay, I am I am rightfully ready to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. The Romans Road ain't, how you doing? We're, we're from XYZ Church, and we just like to, glad to come out here to tell you, would you like to do the Romans Road? Say a prayer off into hell. 
Good tidings. That is gospel. For I, God, beheld that there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that when I asked for them, could answer. God's looking at the entire population from Adam to the last man. Son, Holy Spirit, where are they? And all the doctors, all the doctors, all the PhD, and all the books, and all the great titles are going to be burned up in ashes. And then when we get to New Jerusalem, we're going to exalt one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people are going to be shocked when we get to glory that their church name is not even going to be mentioned. Really, we got the greatest church age in the Laodicean church period. You mean the church that met at Rhonda's house while Peter was in jail and at any mo moment, Nero could have came and grabbed them and put them to persecution, put them to death. Your church is better than that church. Your church is better than the Thessalonian church where they were persecuted. The Thessalonian church was persecuted. And Paul told us about that. You mean the entire life of Paul and Luke in the company in the, in the book of Acts, where two or three are gathered together, Mike, you mean to tell me your church, your church gathering is better than Paul and Silas and Luke? And how many prison doors and earthquakes did you shake last week? How many prison guards got saved last night out of your church? We had 500. Say a prayer. Yeah. Say a prayer. Say a prayer. Say a prayer. And wonder where they'll go when you put them in the grave's hole. God said that no one can answer God. And yet God was going to answer all of them. Behold, they are all vanity, nothing. No value. Their works are nothing. He's talking about mankind. What did you give up for what Jesus does? We, I, I preach on the street all the time. What is more important than the, than the gospel and the finished work of Jesus Christ that you won't put your trust in Jesus? What is it? I'll tell you some of, some of the answers. Well, when we die, that's it. There's nothing else. I got one guy in mind who told me that. Well, you know, my church and, and the doctrines and the traditions of the church. Oh, well, I'm a good person. Well, what you do, you offend people. You turn people away. I believe we're all going to go to heaven. And God says with all those answers, they are vanity and their works are nothing. And their molten images, back in the Catholic Church, and the Mormons, you know the Mormons have, have images too, they had those golden plates locked up somewhere. The Jehovah Witnesses have images too. They have a watchtower. Their magazine is an image. What do they peddle? Do they peddle the Bible? Do they peddle the watchtower? And then Buddha, the big fat belly button. Their images are wind. <laughs> what is wind? <laughs> and confusion. <laughs> and the Bible says God's not the author of confusion. Let's come it down to, to chapter 41. Let's boil it down. What is chapter 41? What is man? Absolutely nothing. 
Why would even God, of all that he's created, why would he? I always wonder, why didn't God die for a dog? I mean, a dog is loyal. A dog is patient. A dog is caring. A dog is obedient. You tell a, some dog, you tell them, stay. They'll stay. We had a dog one time, we put a, we tell him to sit, we put a bone right in front of him. That dog would not touch that bone. You say, okay. You tell, and there's times that, that Jesus says, go to all the world, preach the gospel. They wouldn't do it. And then in the ministry of Jesus, he, he would heal somebody, right? He'd say, oh, don't publish it. And what would they do? they go out and publish it. <laughs> Whatever God says, man do that. Don't eat that fruit. Well, what are they doing? They're eating the fruit. Peter, James, and John, stay awake. He comes back. They're asleep. Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Where is Paul? He's in Jerusalem. What is man? The best Christian we know, Paul. And we're failures. We're sinners. Who is the greatest? Not Ali. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 